things, you know, if, if you're working for somebody, wouldn't it be a good idea to know what they think? I mean, you could be a good employee if you know what they think. I, mean, I know what he likes, I know what he doesn't like, I want to do what he likes, right? And you get promoted. So now, let's just talk about that for a minute. I don't want to talk to you, but not every thought you have is your own. Okay? Can I get a name in? Yeah. If, if we go back to, um, we go back to Genesis, and, and we first of all, you know, the first thing that happened is the glory of God came, right? And when God's glory is here, anything's possible, right? Today, right now, anything's possible because the presence of God is here. Okay? Now, Adam, Adam we know the story, you know, Adam and Eve sin, and, and uh, do exactly what God said not to do, like a lot of us have done. And, and this is interesting to me, so Papa God, every night he'd come walk in the cool of the evening with his children. Come on, it's time to take a walk. I mean, wouldn't that be great? I took a walk with my wife the other day before I came here. I was just wondering, we're just holding hands, it was just a nice breeze, you know. It's lovely. Papa God, every night, walking in paradise, right? And then he comes and he goes, okay, Adam, he, he, I'm here, let's take a walk. I mean, he's playing God out of it. Okay? He knows everything, he's God. He knows the beginning from the end. The end from the beginning. And there's no answer. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And, and, and there's no answer. Finally, he says, over here, Lord. And God says, what are you doing over there? Oh, we're hiding from you. And God says, why are you hiding from me? I mean, just to paraphrase, make it really easy to understand. Why are you hiding from me, God says? Because we're afraid and naked. Now, this is so revealing. The next line says, just three, who told you you were naked? Now, there was nobody there that could tell them. Think about it. There was nobody there that could tell except one being. Now, we, we know that, that you know, Satan entered the serpent. And now serpents don't speak. Has anybody ever heard one speak? I have heard one speak. Now there was that donkey in Numbers 22, but that was a special occasion. Once in a while I wonder if my, my horse ever talked to me. God will have him say something, you know? But, but I can be like, you know, animals don't speak, basically. You know, it's, it's just the animals' way it's operating. So how did the serpent say, did they go to shame school? Did they go to the naked school? You are now, you have flashcards, you are now naked. And they, and they, they never bothered them before running around the business. Why is it bothering them now? Right? They had no reason for something unholy and unclean to come into them. Right? And how did they get there? By way of thoughts? No, no, think about this. Why would God create Adam and Eve in a place where evil existed, because, because Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall to the earth like lightning, right? And, and, and what was the first sin? The first sin, the original sin, was not Adam and Eve. It was Lucifer. He rebelled into one of the angels with him. Well, why would God put Adam and Eve in a place where evil was surrounding them? I think I've come to one conclusion, because they were on probation. Just like we are. Yes. Why should God take us into all eternity if we're just going to rebel again? I'm going to rebel. I'm done with that part of my life. I want to be obedient to God. Whether I feel like it or not. What's this thing about feelings anyways? You know, your feelings lie. I mean, if, what's that guy that made me and keep running into you right now and said, those friends, Here's a million dollars. Your feelings, all of it, would change. Right? Your feelings are, you know, we, really, we got to think holy thoughts and take captive our thoughts. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said that. So, unfortunately, some of us are sitting in here and we've been entertaining unholy thoughts. We're, we're born again. We're spirit-filled. We might be tongue-talking, you know, spirit-filled Christians. But there's things that are not <coughs> completely holy in there. In fact, I did a spiritual counting the other week, and, and I, 
I was so excited, I was 75% holy. <laughs> now, if anybody's 100%, please come right now, because I'm going to learn from you. So that's what I do. We we're not. We want to be. I mean, but God's grace, mercy, and love, you know? He covers us. I mean, as long as you've got a heart. I mean, most of this, King David sinned, he was a murderer, an adulterer, he did all this terrible stuff, right? But he was quick to repent. We need to be quick to repent. Yes. So the, so the voice of the Lord is, is only really shown three times in the scriptures. In Matthew 3, 17, uh, Mark 1, 11, Luke 3, 22. And what does he say? You, he says, this is my beloved son in whom well pleased. Right? No. Does he say that about you? Is he saying that about you? Let's be honest. He is. And, and we can prove it from um, John 1 12, Romans 8 14. You know, he says, You are his beloved sons and daughters in whom he's well pleased. And you go, Yeah, but you know, I goofed up here, I goofed up today, this morning. He's going, I love you. You're my beloved child. Yeah, thanks, sir. Right? I mean, you're predestined, you're called, you're justified, you're, you know, you're, you're glorified, you're, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God's got a plan and a purpose for your life, right? Can, can I ask those people that, that um, raise their hand? I, I didn't hear my, my earthly father tell me that he loved me. Um, not really. I maybe he said it one or two times, but it didn't really seem like he means it, you know? Um, I know what that's like, and I don't often do this, but except God wants it done, and I, I think He wants this done right now. So what I want to do, if you'll be willing, I, I want those people that never heard your earthly father say, I love you, I want you to come up, and I, I need some guys, I just want some men that I can trust, and I want you to hold, I want you just to hold that person, and, and I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. And, and we're just going to pray God to, to heal that broken heart because Jesus came to mend the broken hearted. Can we do that? Is that all right? Okay, how about we, um, we just, uh, let's just do it. Let's get it done. Because I want to move on. You know there's something else here. And, and so if you've never heard your father say about you, then I want you to come down. I need any, any man on staff to come up and, and, and take one of these sisters and this brother. Okay, guys that I can trust because you know this is this is gonna be a holy moment. So we have enough men to cover. We need some more men up here. Okay, I want I'd like the men to, to, to be on um, my side, face them, yeah, if that's okay. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to hold this sister, I'm, I'm gonna, I want you to repeat what I'm saying, okay? And, and I'm going to ask you to forgive, because God said if you don't forgive others, He will not forgive you. Okay, so you're going to have to forgive.